Hi folks, I hope you're all well and you're having an all right lockdown. I hope everyone's safe and at home. Um, I thought it was time to do us another craft video. So thanks very much for all the folk that have been in contact because they've done their previous two crafts. That's really lovely. Um, I've been racking my brain thinking about what else we can do just from bits and bobs that you might already have at home. So for this week, what you will need is a little bit of wool, a pair of scissors, some cardboard like a cereal packet because we are going to make a woven woolen bookmark so anyone that comes to my craft classes uh, will already know i am a touch obsessed with bookmarks and um, but this is a really nice project and it's a little bit time consuming but for a uh, for the odd lockdown that is ideal so first off we're going to make ourselves a cardboard weaving loom so grab yourself a bit of cereal packet cut yourself a nice rectangle and First off, you're going to mark onto it at the top and bottom. I realise it's left and right at the moment, but it will be. We'll use it like this. Um, so mark on the top and bottom some notches. So here I've done them about 8mm apart. You want an even number of notches. Um, and for the, for the example that I'm going to be using today, I've got 12. So mark on your notches. We are going to... We're going to put onto it our vertical threads so let's start with let's start with a bit of green so starting with the bottom of your of your weaving loom just poke the end of that wool so it's caught in between that little cut in the cardboard bring your wool up to the top bring it in through there and then from behind background so that first tab is holding our wool in place then you can bring it down to the bottom don't pull it too tight at this point just let it just let it rest where it wants to rest and it goes into that one and back out up to the top again making sure we're not tugging it too much and continue along doing that until you are happy with the width of your project and then when you are, bring it through the bottom tab again so that both of your loose ends are at the bottom. And then we can take that off. So I've got a little, here's one I've made earlier, Trez Blue Peter. So here are all of my vertical threads and I've got my two ends, which will be at the bottom. And I favour a multi-grain hoop. I'm not even getting sponsorship. I've missed a trick there. Cool. So I've got my I've got my blue threads, which are going to be my verticals. Next, I need some yarn. I keep saying threads. I mean wool. Anything you fancy. Some yarn to be the horizontal. So I'm going to use this nice oatmeal -y colour. So when I was doing this um, with groups previously, we used darning needles, which are the really big fat needles. And I've got some really nice plasticky ones. I'm guessing that folk don't have those. If you do, fabulous. Pop them on. But you can make yourself a, um, a really nice darning needle just out of some more of the same cereal pack, to be honest. Um, or in weaving terms, we would call this a shuttle as it goes across. So this is just a little bit of cardboard. I have cut a hole in it so I can pop my wool through there. Do it better, cat. I'm going to pop my wool through here and I can use this as a bit of a makeshift shuttle for my weaving. So here's the other end of my wool. I'm going to tie my horizontal wool to the first piece. So here we go, that's a little knot. We'll slide him up to the top. So now I am ready to start weaving. The general principle with weaving is you're just making sure that your that your needle or your shuttle is going over one strand then under the next so I've started with an under so I will go under then over under then over under then over well I mean etc repeat until end I'm going under then over each one until we have there we go so hopefully you can see that nicely that every other strand of my vertical yarn is over 
and every other strand of my horizontal is under. Now I've made mine really long because I want a good long stretch of this oatmeal colour. But we don't want it to tangle, there we go. And I'm going to bring that right up to the top. There we go. So that's sitting nicely at the top. So now for this one, I am going to do the same thing. So I started with under, so I will go under, then over, under, then over, etc. Until I get to the other end. There we go. So this is the stage where it's really easy to pull your to pull your horizontal yarn, your working yarn, too tight. I tend to put a fingertip there so that I can pull it and bring it up my uh, pull it up my blue yarn, but I'm not going to bring it in too tight. That's looking pretty good. And I mean, guys, this one is this one is time consuming, which is kind of ideal because we got time um, or at least I know a lot of you have time and um, big up to all the key workers that don't have time but just keep going on this pattern keep bringing the yarn through Um, actually one thing I will say is at this end you know the first bit that we tied on there's a little stringy bit you can catch that in the side at this stage so I'm gonna catch him in there that's gonna look really neat and lovely later on We'll do one more together on the video because then I can show you one more bit and then I shall pause and I shall do a bunch more weaving so that I can show you the next bit. Let's do the fourth line. So continuing in the pattern, not bringing it, not pulling it too tight. So if I pulled it too tight, it's just going to all concertina up and sort of skew it out of shape. Let's undo that, that looks nasty. But what you can do is, so with my previous example, I have pushed the horizontal yarn all the way up so that you actually can't see my vertical yarn at all. All you see is there is the horizontal. For this one, I'm going to leave it a lot more open. So you're going to be able to see the blue and the, and the biscuit colour between each other because I think that'll look really nice. So, but you could, if you wanted to get more of this effect, you could really push that up and really close up those those gaps until you can barely see the uh, the wool in between right as I say I'm just gonna keep weaving down for a little bit um, and then I will show you how to change colors so I shall see you in a moment and we will change to a different shade of wool okay I've been weaving away for for a little bit now so I've got quite a bit of progress done before I join on the next colour, I just thought I'd show you a bit of a trick because sort of it doesn't matter how careful you are, you're always going to get some bits that are pulling in more than others. And what I like to do periodically is just stretch out. Every so often push these bits up a little bit. You can actually manipulate these vertical threads a little bit still. Just sort of pull them into, into position. Neaten up your work, basically. Just just neaten it up every now and again. I mean, or don't, and leave it nice and rustic, as the uh, as the fabulous Mary Berry would say. We like it. We like it to look a little bit rustic, a little bit informal. There we go. I'm now going to join on my second colour. I'm actually only going to do my second colour just for a little bit because I want the last bit here. Oh, sorry, the last bit here um, to be to be tassels at the bottom. So. In fact, I'm going to move these out of the way a little so that I can show you this bit at the bottom here. So I will remove this. I've just got my last little tiny bit of the of the biscuit coloured yarn. We're going to go onto the tealy coloured yarn. So I've just made myself another shuttle. Seriously, so much product placement. I just really like a hoop. There we go. I've tied my new yarn on. So the knot is just sitting at the corner where we're going to turn it around. I'm going to do one more knot in those two, just make sure it stays where it's told. I'm going to trim those so they're a little bit short, a little bit easier to manage. 
So now, oh, this shuttle's fatter than the other one. Not that I'm meaning to body shame the shuttles. Here we go. Dee, 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 dee. So I'm going to do a couple of lines of this. So please bear with me while I do one more because I just want to show you how you tidy those ends up when you've changed colour yarn. So we'll come back this way. Eep. I just feel like when I showed you the first time it was a little bit quick so we want to do another another version of that. So at each end when you bring your shuttle through to do the next stitch your wool wraps around this end thread so just make sure that the two threads that have cut off you're wrapping those with your first with your first vertical yarn and then they will be caught up and I think I used the word encased um, they will be encased in that first the first wrap of your of your horizontal yarn oh it does only just fit there we go so this loop at the this loop at the edge has now caught our first vertical and these two edges just wanted to show you that and then I would keep on going you can keep on going put in as many colors as you like so like with this example I've changed the colors quite regularly and all of those ends are you can just see the knots in some places but all of the loose ends are hidden up in this in this strand but I am going to just to keep it all on the same side I'm going to do one more pass across here and then we shall finish our bookmark we'll give him his tassels and call him done so we'll bring that through one last time and actually that's in the nick of time my first uh, my first verticals come loose so what we are going to do now I'm gonna bring this back into this direction so that you can see the whole thing at once so I'm just going to release release the top from its notches and the same for the bottom there we go so now at the top we've got a little bit of extra space on these loops because they were around the notches so I like to just really gently pull on these vertical threads until I can work them through my project because I want to take some of the slack from here. There we go. So I'm gonna do that one at a time. Making sure, I realize that this is a little bit of a tangle and I feel like my lighting isn't brilliant to show you this, but hopefully you can, can you see how it's sort of pulling down the side? I don't have a super duper filming setup <laughs> in my house we're all a little bit make do and mend for these videos hopefully you can see that that is it's taking up that extra it's taking up the extra wool at the top so I want to do a little bit more on this one let's grab that yep there he goes do one more here Now that is looking pretty good. So I'm all of a tangle at this stage now. So let's snip off these extra these extra bits of yarn. Clear the decks a little bit. So at the bottom here we have got the loops that were around that were around each of our little cardboard nodes. So I like to snip these loops and each one tie it in a knot. So at this end I want to, t I've got my, ah here we go, here's, here's our last bit of the, 
Here's our last bit of the horizontal yarn. So I can tie these two together. Basically, on for these for these end bits, anywhere that you see a bit of loose wool, tie it to its next door neighbour. So we're going to end up with all knots along the bottom. So here's another two, tie these in a knot. Here's another two, tie these in a knot. Ooh, it does look wacky at this end bit. I think we've nearly got them all. There we go. So I'd I'd keep I'd keep tweaking with this a little bit just to get that end bit all neat. Make sure that everything is is tied off. Make sure that all of my knots are really tight. Some of them might want to be double knots just to make sure that it's really that it's really neat and safe. And I would probably keep keep tweaking it a little bit as well. So just sort of making sure that all of the biscuit threads are pulled up nicely, pulling it out a little bit. And just sort of, yeah, giving it a little bit of TLC until it sits nice and smooth and flat. Now this end, I've got one bit strand from the biscuit colour. This one straggler would actually annoy me a little bit. So this is where my darning needle would come in handy because I would just catch it and pull it up the side here. If you don't have a darning needle, this might have to be like, like when like when people get a single nail painted a different colour. We'll keep this one as a, as a bit of a bit of an intrigue. Cut all these off to be the same length. And there we go. I feel like this particular one needs a little bit more TLC. The last little stage pulling those threads through, it's a little bit closer here than it is here. But I just wanted to get to finish off the video so that you weren't watching me forever. Um, yeah, but you could have taken a little bit more time than I did at the end there. And then there's our tasselly bookmark. Here's his tasselly bookmark buddy. This one's for small books, this one's for long books. I hope you enjoyed that video, I hope that you enjoy making a bookmark and as always send me any photos of, of your work, ask me any questions, um, I'll pop the slide that shows my email address etc on and most importantly stay safe, keep crafting and see you soon. Thanks very much guys, bye!